So we're here with Mr. Michael Anthony, who is the author of Towns and Villages, The Sound of Marching Feet, and Green Days by the River. And today we're going to talk to Mr. Anthony about where his journey began as a writer. What's your first book, sir? Yes, yes. Well, well my first the journey began as a writer right here, in fact. Because I'm looking at the first book I ever wrote. That was in 1963. It came out. It was published in 1963 and it's called The Games Were Coming. And I can see this is, is um, a picture of, of, of the first edition uh, from, from uh, the Caribbean Writers Series. This book, the uh, first in Trinidad, and uh, it, it, I was so thrilled when when the, the book was was published. Uh, I, it, it's 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 difficult to tell you know how you feel when you 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 look at your first book, which had been written several years ago. And what year did you write this book? And this this book was published in 1963. You wrote this in Trinidad and Tobago? No, no. I, I uh, oh, what what's the matter with me? In 1963, I said, eh? Yes. Yes. Well, I went to England in 1954, and I went almost ostensibly to to. Um, you, you you know the the BBC had their program Caribbean Voices, and I felt if I were in England it would be so much easier. All these magazines around, etc. I like to go up to England and try and try and get my um, try try and, and and get my stories on calling the West Indies. You know Caribbean Voices, because Caribbean Voices was well known to me in Trinidad. And I, but I thought I thought I would never sort of reach London. In in other words, when you send uh, when when you were sending a, a short story to the two Caribbean voices, it went to Jamaica first, and Lindo, a man, a man called Mr. Lindo, he chose the best of those stories. And sent what he called the best, what was the best, in his opinion, to England, to BBC. He was a Jamaican man. Yes, yes. He was one of the people linked with, um, linked with calling the West Indies. Anyway, I went to London in 1954, and in the same week I went to London, Naipaul, Vidya Naipaul. I heard. A man called Vidya Naipaul was coming down to be the program producer of of BBC. So I said, "Well, look, it would be nice if I could um, send something to Naipaul, just to await his his coming, some some story that I had written, etc., and hear what he says." So I sent this thing, this little packet, to the BBC, to 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 Vidya Naipaul. And um, the next thing I knew was that Naipaul came and um, he, he read the stories and he sent to call me. So I went to, over to him and I remember this short story I, was sent, I had sent to him was called The Strange Flower. And then, um, let me see, and I sent both three poems to him. Eileen of the Islands and something else. I don't know if you've heard of, of Eileen King, have you? You've never heard of her? No, a, a runner who was the, the Commonwealth, well, she, she was pretty good. And I wrote a, wrote a little poem on Eileen of the Islands, now in London town, that, that sort of thing. So anyway, Naipaul, when he came to call me, you know, he said, I sent a call, you not because your story is good, you know, but because there are certain things about it, I want to talk to you, you know, I want to talk to you on. And we, we, we talked for a little while, etc. 
and um, well, what what it it ended up in is this that I became a regular writer for the for his program, which was Caribbean Voices. And uh, as I said, the year was 1954. Naipaul began in January 1955. I began sending little stories. But one of the things I had that that was very dissatisfying was that um, uh, you it, 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 it took so long. It's not Naipaul's fault. It wasn't Naipaul's fault, but it took long for the BBC to to say yes, we are going to take this. My, this short story, etc., and you had to wait almost the the the, the whole year to, to to hear some news of it, and um, that 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 was not at all um, a very nice thing. I you know I, I I I didn't like it, but I was very pleased that I was always I had my short stories accepted, and it went on for a little while. And um, I was regarded as, as well, not the worst of their show story writers. I must say that. And um, so, but this this book came in 1963, right? So I, I, I was uh, already in England, let me see, nine years. And um, Naipaul himself had talked to somebody about this. Book. And owing to what he said, I got a book accepted. Your experience at Caribbean Voices may have made this book very possible because people were seeing and hearing your work. Yeah, they were familiar with your name. So they would have had people in Trinidad and Tobago yes. sitting down and listening to Michael Anthony from Mayaro. Yes. And that would have been a big deal for people, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so when when you were in Trinidad, for example, listening to Caribbean voices before you went to England, yes, were there Trinidadian names you were hearing? Yes, big big thing. I mean, that is the reason why I was so anxious to get up there because I said, well, these boys are big boys, and I, and if I can can meet them and chat with, with them sometimes, it would be very helpful to me. I was born at Mayaro, and I went to the Mayaro RC school. And there was nothing that to make me like writing, really. Although we had one library there, and the library had one book. <laughs> and, the, and the library, the, the, the book the library had, was, had one poem. <laughs> one, po <laughs> one poem in the book. I can't remember the name of the, the, the author of the poem. Right. But, it, the, but the poem was called Songs of the World Unborn. And I remember it so well because I used to, I read the, the, the line several times, Songs of the World Unborn swelling within me and shoot from the heart of spring as I wove the world this, 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 um, um, wet and rich, this piece is born. What is it to me you sing? My body warm, my brain clear, unreasoning joy possesses my soul complete. And the thrill air metals my blood, and the pavement rings to my feet. Oh, houses erect and vast, old people sprawled, you are but dust. I shall come with the winds and blow, and you will crumble, O oh, phantom spirit. And it goes on like that. So I liked that poem, and it meant something to me. And the, the, the thing about it is that I was very particular about returning the, the book one time and so on and so I returned the book. But somebody else borrowed the book and it nev I never saw the book again. So the library had to close down. <laughs> <laughs> Songs of the World Unborn and Song of the Book Unreturned. <laughs> In a way, your interest in history was it was it already blooming at that point no. in time? No, no, but but um, now I'm talking about 1944. There, I was 14, and um, I I just loved poems, poetry. I I just loved poetry, 
and I I knew all the poems from the, from my school books. I said them over and over again. But if anybody had asked me, what do you want to be when you when when you grow up? I would have said a writer or a poet or something like like that. But I honestly didn't feel I would be anything because my arrow was like a backwater education wise and, and from every other point of view. So I thought I I won't get anywhere but it would be nice to be a writer. So I, I would say, oh I would like I would love to be a writer. I would love to be a poet. <laughs> Little things like that. And did you find yourself attempting your own poems at that point in time? Um no. But another thing that happened was that when I was, say, about 14, first of all, in Mayaro, we used to live by the, the, the beach. But at a, at, a, at a point later in life, say about three, four years later, we, we moved a bit inland, different from, 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 from where we, we, we were living. And um, I was getting used to the, to the place and so on. And I used to try to write. I, I, I think that at 14, I was trying to write short stories. I was trying to write short stories and I, I, I don't know how far I got, but, but by the time I was 16, I, I may have written, written about three, two or three short stories. I was lucky in that I did get an invitation to to go to the junior technical school in San Fernando. From left to right, you are the fifth boy. One, two, three, four, five. Is it the right one? Uh, the right picture? Yes. And that would have been a grand opportunity for the village at the time that Michael Anthony is leaving Mayaro to pursue this mechanical work. Yes, yes. That yeah. would have been a, a celebration in Mayaro. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the biggest thing to happen to me in Mayaro, who oh, was passing that exam to go to technical school. Was what, sorry? The passing the exam to go to technical school. And having to go and tell all these people, these old people and so on, that I'm going to San Fernando. And... <laughs> I had a big, a big thing, you know, some gave me eggs and this and to give different things. <laughs> anyway, it, it, it was a sort of a situation like that. A letter came to, to, to the headmaster asking him to send about two or three boys to the junior technical school, which was a school he, he, he was just trying to put together etc and uh, so they sent me and then another boy called Wesley Pongini and we, we passed and we started going to a school in San Fernando and then is when I began to think of the future because I realized the junior technical school was a two-year course um, in engine, mechanical engineering the school was on high street and um, I went to that school and I kept thinking all the time if it doesn't work out because I didn't really like mechan mechanical engineering. So I said, well, if it doesn't work out, what will, what will you do? What, go back to Mayara? <laughs> what will you do? And um, it worked out that I went through technical school, a two-year course, and and they they wanted to fire me, and it, but 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 they had some sympathy, a little sim sympathy. My mother was sent for. She came down. She talked and so on. And then they said they'll keep me. And it is while it, it, um, those years were passing, I was thinking. I had a very good friend, Kenny Thomas, very good friend. And he was he had got a scholarship to go to to England to work for the, comp the oil company. And his friend got the scholarship to go up, and, I, and when he got up there, he 
I wrote to him and he wrote to me saying, Michael, whatever are your plans? What do you plan to do? You always talk about writing, writing. You want, you want to, to be a writer. You go to, 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 went to the foundry, you didn't, make, you didn't make good. You didn't make good at all in, in, in mechanical engineering generally. Why don't you come to England and see what, what can be done? And this friend of mine encouraged me. I said, but I know, know nobody in England. He said, well, that's right. You know nobody because I am nobody. <laughs> so I said, okay, I'll come. He left in the 1952. I tried hard in 1953 to, to raise the funds. And, um, and if I had asked him for help, he would have helped me, you know, honestly, because he, he, he was that good and that close. When I arrived in England in 1954, on the pavement there, the, the railway station, uh, Euston station, he was there with a, with a winter coat, a brand new winter coat. And um, he, he said, where is your typewriter? I said, can I afford to buy a typewriter? And so he, so he said, well, look, tomorrow morning, I'm going to come to collect you and we are going to Regent Street. That's all I have to say. <laughs> anyway, the next morning we went to Regent Street, stopping at a typewriter shop, the Remington, Remington Rand, and um, he bought a, he, he bought me a typewriter. I still have the typewriter here. <laughs> I still have it here because I won't throw it away. <laughs> I just won't throw it away. It's the, it's, it's the storeroom there. Uh, um, it's the worst for wear, but you know it's 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 a ruin of a of, of a typewriter. But then I I feel quite happy because it's, it was bought for for me by by Tom. I call him Thomas. My best friend to this day is Tony Thomas. I kept pressing on, but because it is my nature to press on, eh? It's not so much. Uh, well, I didn't want to let Tom down, naturally, but <laughs> it, it is my my way to keep pressing on. Like some people could lie back and relax and say, well, like for instance, Merle Hodge, a girl with a lot of talent, she's a writer, she wrote, um, what's it called? I can't remember the name, title of the book now. But she has relaxed with one book over more than 40 years. Now, now this would, <laughs> for me, this would be unthinkable. Can you tell me a little bit about this movie? Ah, uh, yes. Well, this, this movie, Green Days by the River, I remember very well when I was writing Green Days by the River and um, the thing about it is that I never regarded I never regarded Green Days by the River as as my top book at all but my uh, Andre Deutsch Andre Deutsch who was who was the head publisher he always said to, to me, you know, he said, Michael, um, you might talk about a year in San Fernando and you might talk about the things that are coming and so on, but I think your best book is Green Days by the River. I, I think so because by our sales, it is usually a, a, a top seller. So I don't see why you should consider um, the year in San Fernando, which, which was the, the earmark for filming and so on. I don't see why I should take figure those books are better, but I mean, you know, that is how you feel and, and, and um, I have nothing more to say about it, but I think Green Days by the River is your best book. It is my dream that um, if, if, my, if a second book has to be done, I would like to be in San Fernando. The history of San Fernando. 
and the Napa Rima is from 1595 to 1900. Yes. Yes. Um, you, you probably live at the um, National Archives, sir. Or you still <laughs> live there? I, I used to live there. <laughs> I used to live there. The letters used to come, come to me there. This is the biggest book I've ever seen. Yeah, that's a, what they call a, um, a tomb. <laughs> <laughs> so. <clears throat> and now no, I'm writing. No, no, I, okay. I, I am writing the um, sequel to, to what well, I'm trying to the sequel, but <clears throat> San Fernando is a bit jealous in, in, in my ear. I, I love San Fernando. I've never seen myself. When I went to San Fernando at 14 years, uh, San Fernando was a big city to me. Because leaving Mayaro at that time, in 1944, Mayaro had no running water, it had no electricity, and uh, and um, it was very different from, from, from what it is now. But um, when I go to San Fernando, oh, big, vast city, seeing streets, cars. I mean, I never saw so many cars in my life. <laughs> and, and so um, I, I go to 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 to, to regard myself as a San Fernando boy. Although a Mayaro boy, essentially, essentially a Mayaro boy. I don't want anybody to to make a mistake and say he's a San Fernandian, you know. But still, after Mayaro, Mayaro is very close to me, very close. But after my hammer with San Fernando. Yes. Because your 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 eyes, based on what you're telling me, would have been open so much to starting technical school, realizing that mechanical is, is yeah, not for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then these opportunities come in. And these opportunities and and all this time San Fernando was, was, was I well when I was going to school, the technical school, the, the two year course, I <laughs> I, I thought so much of San Fernando that, uh, and yet, yet, when the holidays drew near, say like November, and, it, and, and November, Christmas is, is uh, when the corn and so on, my arrow was, was coming to the top of, of my mind, and I, I couldn't, well, I used to say, I, I, I wonder why the days can't skip. <laughs> so you get near. I can't wait to go home. When I got home, oh, it, it was a fairy tale. I used to, you, you, you know, my mother, I never considered these things, but my mother was hardworking. And she was working at one of these estate houses in, in my yard. And the best of everything that she could put her hands on, and and they were very nice as well. They would, they would say, give, give, like uh, that. Because you see, you see the, the thing is that because I passed this exam from my order to go to San Fernando, it was a big thing in my mind. Big thing. So, give him the best, you see? And so they treated me like, like that. And I had I had a wonderful time in the hour. In my book of short stories, Cricket in the Road. I don't know if you you saw that. I'm familiar with it, but I've never read. Yes. Well, Cricket in the Road. Um, that that is a book that brings my my hour days to life. You know, a lot of nice stories. I, I, I have 19 stories in that book. Where can I find a copy on the shelf here? Cricket they they, 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 they may, might be, I don't know. I hope that was, is the one that is missing too. How many books have you written and published? 38. 38 books. If someone, whether they're based in Trinidad, wherever they are, in whatever part of the world, how can they go about sourcing your books for purchase, whether they're interested in uh, Tongues and Villages, I strongly recommend this book. Tongues and Villages is sort of the reason that I am here yeah. talking to, to um, Mr. Anthony. 
Reason being is that my dad, as I told you, was working yeah, on a book. Yeah. And we were doing some research on yeah. Pora Village. Yeah. And I flabbergasted to see the information that you had gathered. And I want everyone, if you have the slightest interest in Trinidad and Tobago, whether it is as a citizen or a tourist, yeah. you must have towns and villages of Trinidad and Tobago. That is one of the must have books. And where can we find your books? Well, thank you very much. Uh, you tell me, I mean, how, how, how could I uh, sort of, what, what do I do? What, what, what is there to be done? Okay, so we can find your books in local bookstores. Yeah. But if someone in the US yeah. looking at this video is interested in sourcing your book, can yeah. they buy it online? Is there some bookstores they yeah, can talk yeah, to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. That's 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 what I'm looking for for you. That information yes. that could guide a prospective buyer or reader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. After they're not trying to, to do any, any anything, I went about self-publishing my book. I wasn't really aware of the traditional routes that you could take in terms of maybe finding a literary agent. I was yeah. lucky enough to find. A printer very close to me that gave me a, a favorable price. In a nutshell, it made sense for me to give up writing and publishing books, even though they have had favorable feedback from people. I am fearful because we will have so many future writers that will have that ambition themselves. Yeah. And you will just end up with generations of disheartened writers. Yeah. Peter, I, I know, I know, I... I... Uh, I I think one of the the, the uh, I think one of the, the the main things is you have to, to to be lucky. A young writer, instead of going the self-publishing route, yeah, maybe hold some string. You're excited. Yeah, try to find a publisher. Yeah, I think so. I think I definitely think so. I I definitely think that is a, that is a good way to to do it. The best the best way to do it. And um, and uh, you know work to work work hard. I was happy with and with and with. I never had the cause, although I had the right to do it, to take somebody there and go and check and see how many books were sold and so on. I never did that sort of thing. But I fell among good publishers through I fall, in fact. So before we close off, Mr. Anthony, can you tell me what? You are working on right now, or is it top secret? <laughs> no, it isn't. It certainly is not top secret. I am doing a second volume of a book called Anna Parima, which is a history of the Naparimas. It involves the, the, the whole settlement of, of Trinidad and and um, the things we ought to do and where we are going etc yeah and uh, but and then i and then I, after that i will probably enter on my i might try to write a biography because there the you know an autobiography because i want to talk about mayaro a bit and uh, growing up in mayaro at least Growing up in my my area, and I feel that that um, whenever I saw some young my writers around, I would say, well, I, well, I don't need to do anything. I leave it with, with with them. But I'm not seeing any young my my writers, and my area is too good not to talk, not not to have someone to talk about it. So I will do that other book, which might be in the form of an autobiography and um, I, at the moment I have written 38 books I aim at writing 40 books I, I suppose I suppose it's, 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 it's a good figure to, to write about to, to, to write the number of books and so on so I will do that and afterwards I will uh, try and see if I can throw away my pen